Testing, one, two, three. Oops, I think I've unmuted myself. Okay, hello. Uh, welcome back, Friday afternoon. Let me know if you're hearing me. I, I think I had audio problems with my intro, and I'm a little bit late, but uh, uh, throw a comment in there if you can hear me. I think I'm getting sound out, but uh, I really, uh, really do need to, uh, uh, I think I have to stick my headphones on here for a second and double check that. Oh, you're loud and clear. Okay, good. Okay, thank you. Appreciate that. Thanks, folks. It's always a, it's always a bit of guesswork sometimes when you set this stuff up. So, uh, Lee, uh, thanks for joining. Appreciate you joining in again. And Leo, uh, Lowell, uh, thanks for the uh, sound check. I appreciate that. So, and Tony, good to have you here again this week. So, glad you could make it. Uh, and Steve, coming through fine. Thank you very much. Appreciate it, guys. It's always helpful. Um, I do have a set of headphones here, but I wasn't hearing the intro music. Did you guys hear the intro music, the little music with the little intro video, the countdown video? Um, I uh, I didn't know if that was working. So thanks, Lee. Appreciate it. Um, and yeah, so good. Uh, anyway, uh, I'll I'll catch up on uh, if you uh, if you remember to. Hear, I'll I'll see it back anyway. I usually watch these things back to see how things went. Last week was a bit short. I didn't have a lot of material planned for last week, but um, and it was a bit. I, I think what I did is I prepared too much last week, so I kind of ran out of things to do. Uh, Lowell says yes, that worked. Thanks, Lowell. Appreciate it. Okay, uh, good. I couldn't hear it through my headphones, so I don't know why that wasn't working. But anyway. Regardless, um, I do listen to these things back afterwards, so um, I do get uh, um, a chance to kind of see how things went. Like I said, last week was a bit short, but today, um, not sure how long it's going to go, but we'll uh, we'll talk uh, about it and uh, uh, about what we're going to talk about today and see how it goes. So, and as always, I look to you guys to help produce the show, ask questions, um, and uh, you know, post them in the chat. Um, we're uh, we're all things uh, wood turning, tools, equipment, process, techniques, wooden materials. Friday afternoons at 2.30, streaming to both YouTube and Facebook. So, um, you know, if you have a question, uh, chat it in there. Or if you just have a comment, please uh, feel free to do so. So um, look forward to you guys' input all the time and questions. So, so today, I think, is week six in the series of uh, this eight-week series, uh, Shop Tips and Jig Series. So um, the, oh, you know what? I didn't, last week's episode, I haven't posted to the website, but uh, you can find all of these uh, um, uh, things at the uh, at the website. Um, and if I pull up the right one here, is it that one? It's, it is that one. I, uh, uh, but anyway, uh, last week's episode, I didn't post to the website yet. I think I forgot because I, I posted this live stream notice a little late too this week. So anyway, uh, you can find them there and we'll look at that near the end um, of where to find them on the website. Um, so week six is, uh, is all about magnets. So how to use magnets in the workshop. So uh, that's something that uh, I've used uh, quite a bit um, and I'm sure everybody has. So Let's share what we know and how, what, how we use magnets. And uh, I'm going to show you a few things that I do, uh, or I use them for it. I'm not an extensive user, but I've, I've bought in quite a few magnets uh, for shop use and stuff in the, in the past. So we'll, we'll go through that. So um, uh, let's see. So Lee says, is that your hook tool you're using on the beginning strip? Yes. So the intro countdown timer is, uh, is a video of me using the hook tool. It's uh, some footage I shot, I think last year, year before, uh, and I just stylized it with a you know dark in the background and stuff and and stuff. But yeah, that's me and that's my hands, my my hook tool. So uh, good eye there, Lee and Harry. Good to have you here. Thank you for joining. Appreciate it. Um, so let's take a look at. Uh, let me go to overhead first, and uh, we'll 
that will just transition to that and I'll go small in the corner uh, for this. So this is the overhead. Uh, I've got this little bench set up here on my lathe. Here's the spindle. Uh, so I just got this little tabletop set up here to talk about some of the magnets I use and I have around the shop uh, and a few things we're going to do with it. I've got some uh, CA glue here uh, and we're going to we're going to glue something up today. So a magnet to something. So um, so most most lathes are cast iron, um, at least the uh, um, you know or uh, ferrous material where magnets stick. Um, the robust lathe has stainless steel bedways, so stainless steel is not magnetic. Uh, so that is the one place on a robust that uh, is not magnetic. So um, not sure that that causes problems for people with. Uh, with uh, robust, but or sorry, yeah, with robust lathes, but uh, you know, so, certainly let me know. I think the rest of it is magnetic, though, like the uh, the tube steel underneath um, and and all the the bracing and bracketing. So uh, that's good. Uh, Cindy's here. Thanks for joining, Cindy. Uh, good of you to join in on a Friday afternoon. I know you're busy with uh, your workshops, so thanks for joining in. So Cindy's got a robust, and now Steve Thompson has a robust. So. Um, has that been a problem for you guys having stainless steel um, bedways? Um, I know on my lathe, I don't put a lot on the bedways except for maybe, um, you know, lights. Where is my, so I've got this magnetic base light that I sometimes set on my bedways and that certainly helps. Um, so that's one thing where, you know, I can stick it down there and, and, uh, um, you know, have a light sitting there. Um, but beyond that, I don't really stick a lot on my bedways. There is one other uh, thing that we I did use recently. Sorry, I'm having a hard time getting this light back into its proper place. I had uh, uh, one of the club members in the shop last year um, doing uh, a demo on, what do you call it? Like uh, really thin... Um, tremblers or the French word tremble, really long skinny stuff and you need steady strings. So um, we actually used some magnetic bases. I've got a magnet on this guy. This is actually for the headstock uh, for the outboard section. But if you have um, heavy duty magnets like this and you're using them as string steadies on your, on your lathe bed, that may be some place where it would help to have magnets on your lathe bed. So, um, but uh, those are kind of specialized things and uh, certainly free to do that. Um, so, but other than that, I don't stick a lot on my actual bedways, my lathe, but all around it I do, especially on the headstock. So I've got a selection of magnets here. That's my pencil, I'll get that out of the way. So I've got these little magnets that kind of like fridge magnets, got a little handle on it. And let me zoom in a little bit. Um, so it's just a, it's a, a magnet on the side. It's not super strong, but it's strong enough to, uh, um, and let me just uh, zoom this other camera a little bit. Yeah, that one there. There we go. Let's uh, let's look at four. So onto my headstock, if I'm holding a piece of paper or some notes or something like that, um, I'll stick that on. I also use this to hold a, a towel if I'm needing to hold a um, perhaps a splash guard of some sort along my lathe. I've got one here at the headstock, one at the tailstock, and uh, sometimes I hold a uh, shop towel or rag or something like that, or a paper towel. You know, if I'm, if I'm needing a paper towel close at hand or to protect if I'm overspraying, I might might put a um, couple of magnets here and protect the headstock a little bit. So um, while we're at the headstock view, you can see I've got a bunch of Allen wrenches here just on a little dime-sized magnet. And... Uh, they just stick there and they always stay there. I tend to lay them flat so I don't poke myself and I tend to put it below the level of the headstock so my arm doesn't catch on it. There's this big magnet down here that I haven't, it's one of the ones that I had on, on this guy, um, the bottom of this thing. And so I thought I'd show that because it is kind of handy, um, but it's very strong. It has countersunk holes in it for screw heads. So it's meant to be mounted to something. But this has, I don't know, I would say if I held it flat on here, 
um, it would probably be um, about 26 to 30 pounds of pull. It's a very strong magnet. So, and I should caution people that if you uh, have a pacemaker or something like that, you uh, you want to be careful playing with magnets. So, um, so be aware of that. So, um, let's see. Uh, let's see. Uh, one way has optional stainless steel uh, ways. Oh, okay. Didn't know. Uh, said Steve, no, the rest of the lathe can take a magnet. Good. Okay. That's good to know about the robust. Thank you. Um, not a big problem because it's just the bedways, the plenty of steel in other places. Yeah. That's kind of what I thought. Um, so, and, uh, I use lots and lots of magnets. Yeah. Uh, so do I. So, um, there is a, uh, oh, geez, I can't hang on. I'm having, I'm having problems pulling that. Okay. Even, even the edge of this is hard to pull off. It's very, very strong. So, um, and that's why I put it on the edge because otherwise putting it flat, uh, I would, I would have a hard time getting that off. Um, so if you're setting up fixtures, uh, something that's to sit on your bedways or something that needs to be rock solid, like maybe this is a base of a light, um, uh, that you want to mount, uh, these would be a good option. There's similar ones that are round and circular and have a countersunk hole. And if I can get that thing to focus, there we go. You can see the countersunk hole there goes all the way through. So these ones are handy. I've got, uh, I've had a couple on, on my lathe, uh, for, for that guy. He usually sits there with my steel hone. I've got, uh, steel on the back and, and honing diamond grit on this side. So he'll usually sit there. And again, my Allen keys are kind of all gibbled. And this guy, put that up there. I'm going to move that down a little bit. And then um, I've got another kind here. If I go back to overhead, we'll show this kind. It's got a magnet on that side, but it's also got a magnet on this side. So this one posts up on the bedways to where I can hold a tool on the end of that. So if, oops, you didn't see that. So if I post that up there on, on, the, on the, the, the metal tarp part, then I can hold a tool on the other side of that magnet. This one can't do that. It's only a handle. It's very weak on this side, so it wouldn't hold um, a handle. Uh, but I use these back here behind the, the headstock to hold chuck keys. So let me see if I can move some, I'm gonna move this guy out of the way and put him down there. And move this up here. If I post that there, it can hold my large chuck key for the, the one way. It can hold, um, where is that? Usually have my, this is the, the Nova chuck key. So I have, the, have those posted down here. Uh, it can hold um, the, uh, the one way chuck keys right so it's strong enough to hold the chuck key fine it kind of shimmies down a little bit could be a little stronger for that i wonder if i turn it around if it's no it's going to pull the, the the thing down so that works fairly well what it doesn't hold though is the uh, axminster chuck key because The Axminster chuck key is stainless steel, so it doesn't stick. This part is steel, but it's it's got the rubber on it, won't hold it. So that's, for me, um, a disappointment, I guess, or, um, you know, a little nit for me is I'd like to have that magnetic so I can hold it. So that's one thing, stainless steel, uh, not magnetic. So I have a, a few of these, uh, these kind, on the back of the lathe to hold chuck keys and that sort. Um, and I'll, I'll go to a, uh, I'll go to a, a few uh, sources for these things in a minute. The other one I have is this guy. It's a uh, black oxide covered. It looks like it's knurled here on this part. And it's got a screw thread for about a quarter by 20 or uh, it's not quarter by 20, but it's, it's quarter inch diameter by really uh, uh, coarse threads. And it's magnetic on this side. So, if I'm holding a little, whatever I'm holding there. What these are great for is these are perfectly sized to go into pegboard. So if I uh, 
if I swing this other camera up, we'll show that view. I'll zoom that out just a little bit. This is the uh, uh, the pegboard right beside me. Uh, not really pegboard, but uh, wooden board. And I've got several of these uh, these guys up here. One is right here holding the Tali adapter, which is uh, um, three quarter by ten to one and quarter by eight. So that's drilled a quarter inch hole and just screw one of those little things in there. And uh, it works like a champ. So, so if you have pegboard, it would be a, an ideal situation. I've got a little bit of pegboard just to the side holding, um, what do you call it, sanding stuff. So you could screw them right into pegboard. Is that on camera? That, that did fit on camera. And uh, hang stuff like that. So I've got my ruler up here on one. I've got my... Um, depth gauge on another one up there. So, and so those are handy as heck. So, um, I've got uh, several of these I haven't used yet, um, still waiting to be used. So those are uh, those ones are uh, from Lee Valley. Uh, everybody knows Lee Valley, I hope, uh, or a uh, Canadian-based uh, company, but they uh, ship all over the U.S. So. Uh, to, 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 to. The other uh, magnets I've got here, I've got a set of magnets uh, um, from Lee Valley as well. These are a bunch of magnets I started with, uh, experimenting with. This is a package of different sizes. There's small barrel ones here. There's disc shaped ones um, down here. So small disc ones. There's barrels here. Sorry, I'm off camera a bit. There's longer barrels and stuff like that. So. Uh, for whatever application you need, a lot of this uh, you can use in furniture making as well. Um, salt boxes, return salt boxes, and you have a magnetic lid. These kind of little little uh, disc type would be perfect for that, um, about that size. And I got a, I'll put those away. So those are a bunch of disc type, no holes in them, just varying amounts of discs. So that's a good assortment of magnets from Lee Valley if you just want to try out different sizes. Um, but I got a whole whack of disc shaped ones here, um, and they're, uh, fairly strong, uh, magnets. Um, and these, along with those ones with the holes in it, um, I get from, let's see, Total Element. Uh, this is a company out of uh, Denver. I think, Colorado somewhere. Um, and they've got, you see the ones with the holes in it. Um, where is that at? So here, so right in here is the disc ones with holes in it. Here, the bar style with the holes in it for countersinking screws. Uh, they got sphere shaped ones. They got other um, hollow ones. They got bar stock and they all kinds of discs and stuff. So uh, they come in different weights, but the, Neodymium, dimium, um, mag, I can't ever say that word, but uh, the strong ones, um, uh, they are, are plenty for what you, uh, what you need around the shop. Um, I couldn't tell you what sort of pull rating you need for different functions. Uh, I think you just have to experiment. And that's kind of why I bought the, uh, the little sample pack to kind of get an idea of what sizes I needed. Um, the sample pack I got from Lee Valley. So you can get, and the, uh, the screw type I got from Lee Valley. And uh, they have a bunch of magnets at Lee Valley as well. So I, I do like that company. I recommend that one. They got great customer service. Uh, but Total Element, there's a bunch of other uh, places on, uh, you know, you do a Google search for magnets. You'll find Amazon has their own. There's magnets for less. There's lots of places to get them. But uh, I like this one because it's, uh, uh, you know, it's right here in the U.S. So, um, And there's actually a shop here in Dallas. I went and got some. I can't remember the name of it now, but so that's a good source to check out. Um, let's see, what else do I got on the desk? Well, I've got these things. Get these at uh, Harbor Freight or 
or wherever you might want to get them at, um, little uh, parts dishes. I use these all the time. I've got one here filled with uh, hones and, and uh, my scrapers, Allen wrenches, hook tools. Um, so I got uh, in extra screws or Allen screws I may have uh, dropped or missed from somewhere, uh, set screws, um, all kinds of stuff. So I have about four of these sitting around the shop. I got one over here with a bunch of screws. I've got uh, from, uh, you know, from the, uh, uh, you know, for, for wood screws, the, when I do jobs around the house and stuff, odd jobs, stuff like that. So just uh, bear with me. I'm looking at the other camera for a second. And where is that? Go there. Yeah, maybe about there. Um, so those are handy. I would recommend everybody probably has one of these or two of these, you, you know, a couple of bucks, you get uh, a bunch of those. The base is magnetic, so it can stick anywhere. Um, can stick to the, I still have the wrong thing on there. There we go. Sorry about that. Missed changing that page. And that's what I wanted to show. So these, uh, these guys stick, um, to anywhere they can stick on the side. Um, and so like that, and usually hold, they don't hold a whole lot in terms of magnetic power, but they hold enough, um, for your parts. Don't go wandering. Um, so I usually have those sit, sitting on my bandsaw, um, you know, turn around and grab stuff off it or put stuff there if I need it. So, so those are great things. It, uh, helps with, uh, wrangling, uh, twist ties, the metal ones. Um, let's see, let's catch up on on notes here where we're at bear with me a second as i take a look good well okay um yeah let's let's say so that stainless chuck key is inconvenient yeah it is that that's a good word inconvenient um see tony says harbor freight has rare earth magnets dirt cheap yeah so good rare earth is i think what i was trying to think of as well thank you tony uh, yeah, Harbor Freight, um, do that. Uh, Gerald, thanks for joining. Uh, another good source of magnets is K&J Magnetics out of Pennsylvania. Yeah, I saw them on the web uh, Google search as well. I haven't bought anything from them, but uh, it's a good source if they're out of uh, Pennsylvania. Good job. Excellent. Thanks for that. So, um, and then if we look at, um, what else? I had something else on my desk here, sorry. Um, kind of losing my brain for a minute. Uh, let me go back here. Uh, everybody's got to have one of these, right? So uh, this is uh, this is uh, a magnetic pickup tool. This is again just a general tool, a telescopic magnetic end. So you can pick up those Allen wrenches that fall on the ground um, or in your sawdust pile. Um, it just uh, Saves you from bending over, looking in the uh, in the sawdust. So right below my lathe, as many of you know, right under here, uh, through the bedways, I got a garbage can. Right now, it's pretty much full of sawdust. And uh, sometimes I drop stuff down in there, and so I have to uh, I have to go fishing down in the uh, in the garbage down there with this tool. So uh, these are uh, handy. In fact, I I made one of these uh, out of a kit. Uh, I think Penn State had a kit, and I made one for Shelley for uh, for Christmas. So a uh, nice hand-turned wooden handle. And uh, that she loves, because now when she drops her paper clips or uh, binder clips and stuff, she pulls that out. So handy thing and a great, great gift. So I would uh, encourage you to get one of those. So um, I do have a few other things, but uh, let's take a little... Uh, uh, a little detour for a second. Uh, what does Cindy say? Another thing about magnets is the N value. N48 is not as strong as, uh, as the same size magnet as N52. Oh, okay, good to know. Thank you. That's the kind of information that we're uh, we're hoping to share. So um, that's something I you know I didn't know. You could probably look on on Total Element or K and J, and they would have all kinds of information and and stuff to to help you make those choices. So uh, good good of you to bring that to the discussion, Cindy. Thank you. Um, so what I wanted to do is I am always looking for my pencil. So 
um, I'm going to take one of these little coin size, you know, uh, oops, it just went zipping away. Let's, um, and glue it to the back of my pencil here. So that's one thing I thought, you know, uh, I have been wanting to do for a long time. And, uh, because I, I'm always setting this guy down and if I can just set him there or here, then I thought that'd be great because I've got my headstock. I want to keep kind of clear. I don't want to put too much up there um, and stuff because I usually have my elbow up there uh, for some stuff. So I'm going to take just a little drop of CA glue and I'm using, I'm trying this mercury adhesive, adhesive stuff um, and I'm going to put a little dab right there and plop this guy right on there. I'm just going to let that sit. I'm not going to spray it with activator because we'll we'll let that sit and take a look at it afterwards. And uh, I think that should be should be strong enough to hold up that pencil. Pencil's fairly lightweight, so um, won't hopefully you have to search for that pencil anymore. So, and that's uh, that's a great pencil. I and my daughter got me that for Christmas a few years ago. A couple of them. They are. Uh, replaceable lead plastic flat carpenter pencils. Um, I like carpenter pencils around the shop because they're, they're durable and I like the flat for, for indexing uh, along the, uh, uh, along the, uh, the tool rest if I'm doing some indexing. It's just uh, dead simple that way. Oh, excuse me. I had to take a sip of Coke. Um, so yeah, projects like that. Other tools. Um, so here's, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna play a short video, and uh, uh, I think, oh, what does she say? Total element has different end values of magnets. Oh, okay, interesting. Um, I don't know if it's a industry thing or just a vendor related thing, but um, good stuff. So I'm going to, uh, let me. Uh, Where's, okay, that is that. Let me, uh, -bum. I'm going to show a little bit of a video. And uh, this is a short video. Uh, let me get that on to preview. There we go. And um, I'm going to take myself out of the picture when this video plays. This is a short video, two minutes. Uh, let me know in the comments to make sure you can hear the audio. It should come through. Um, but this is a video on sharpening a 40-40 gouge. And I know last weekend, uh, Cindy went through her demo. I watched it, by the way. I watched the replay, Cindy. Um, and uh, showed the 40-40 gouge. And this is a, a little tip using magnets to get a 40-40 gouge ground if you are new to it, which I am. I'm new to the 4040 grind. So uh, let's take a look at this. Um, there's the start. So we'll play this through. We got a 40 degree bevel and, here. Uh, we got 40 degree line. Hopefully you're hearing that. Magnet in there. Magnet on this one. We've got a little piece of bandsaw blade stick that on the side wall and gives you an indication of where the wall is put that on the platform i want that parallel to the platform that will give me my 40 degree Starting place, line it up with this line, keep that parallel. That'll give me my wing. There. We get a nice cut bevel on that side.
blend the nose. And we got a pretty good 40-40 grind. Sorry, I turned my mic off when that video was running. Sorry about that. So let me, go, let me repeat everything I just said because you all just heard lips moving or saw lips moving. Uh, so that little tip with the magnet and the little strip of uh, bandsaw blade is, uh, is how I was able to kind of make sure that the wings, the inside wing is parallel to the table as I start that 40-40 grind. So um, that helped me a lot. Um, I just uh, kind of figured that out one day trying to figure out how to keep that wing parallel. And so one of the reasons I came up with it was because of, of making these. So let me grab my little strip of a bandsaw blade. So these were turned three, four years ago. Uh, it's a ring turned, fatter here, skinnier here. So this was turned, all turned on the lathe. Uh, but on the back side, I embedded three uh, magnets. And so I had this old bandsaw blade so that could stick uh, to the back side. Why would I want to do that? Well, that's so I can do this off camera so you don't sh see what I'm doing because it's probably not very pretty. There, I can see that. Let me go big. So it becomes a little little magnet. So that strip of, uh, of bandsaw blade is inside my shirt. And this guy just clips on onto that. So you can make um, lapel pins, for lack of a better word, um, out of your projects using magnets. So so I made uh, about 90, 90 of these. I couldn't get the last six. I had an index system to 96 flags. But the last six were pretty, pretty scary to cut out on the bandsaw. So I just left it. So I had 90 of these made up. I've only got about six or ten left. I usually give them out to veterans at SWAT and stuff like that. So uh, another great use for magnets. So of course if you weren't a pacemaker this might not be a good idea. Um, so yeah that is uh, where this little piece of, uh, I'm just reaching up under my shirt, this little piece of of uh, bandsaw blade. I said oh I got a bunch of these. I had a bunch of these left over so that made me think about putting that inside. Take one of these guys. Inside the flute, and you can't see that, I'm still in the way. And then take that, and that gives you a orientation. It'd be a great learning tool as well for people learning to turn their gouge. Um, you know, which way to turn it when they're, when they're turning. I haven't done that. I don't, I don't, I haven't obviously been teaching much in the last year, person to person. Uh, but that's a great way to kind of introduce somebody to flute orientation as well. So, okay. Okay. Yeah. So sorry about the audio issues. Okay. Um, let's see. So that was a good one. Uh, tools around the shop are magnetic. Oh, so before we get to tools, there's another one I have on my lathe. I don't really use them. One of these magnetic bars, right? So uh, this is a Harbor Freight job. I haven't really used it much, um, to be honest, because I, I just had it set up on my mechanic cabinet. But if I, uh, if I look back over to the, the tool wall, I have a couple up here that hold dividers and pointers, Allen wrenches, uh, uh, screws, woodworm screws, um, the big uh, 
Axminster chuck screw drill bit, just odds and ends, extra key. And so very handy to have those uh, like that. So um, yeah. Um, so having these magnetic bars, this is a Harbor Freight job, um, would be handy. The little holes in it to mount on, on your, your wooden shelf or, or, um, wall, wall hanging area. So those would be cool. Um, other tools that are magnetic. I bought, uh, these set of Bosch tools a while ago. This is, this is going to blind you. Ooh, yeah. So this is a, um, a magnetic based, um, portable light. Uh, let me see. Does tail stock? Yeah, that'll kind of show it. So it has a little stand um, and uh, can tilt to different areas. So it, uh, it can be a great light and I can stick it on the lathe if need be, use an extra light. So those kind of magnetic tools are, are handy. Um, yeah, my, my tape measure has a, um, has a, a magnet set on it, but guess what I couldn't find today? I can't find my tape measure. So <laughs> I don't know where it is right now. So it's around the shop here somewhere, but, um, magnets tend to try and help, uh, keep things in their place. Um, if you don't have magnets, then what can you use? Well, you got alternatives. So, um, uh, black adhesive fastener. So this is two inch wide hook and loop, uh, fastener stuff. So I've shown this a couple of times on the live stream, but, um, this is a great substitute for, uh, magnetic stuff. So, um, both the hook side and the loop side are adhesive backed. And so you cut off a little strip, stick it to whatever you want, cut off this strip, stick it to whatever you want. And, you can stick them together. So that is a great um, substitute for magnets um, or just plain old tape um, or nails or screws. Um, so yeah, all kinds of solutions out there. Um, and, uh, you know, the, uh, the other thing I've done with magnets is, uh, I have this, um, let's see what's going to show this best, that one. So you, you make a nice bowl like this and, and you kind of go, well, I really don't like that bowl. So what do you do with the bowls that you kind of have just sitting around in your workshop, really not, uh, not really pleased with them. Um, you know, maybe give them to empty bowls, uh, but the ones you, uh, you really kind of thought you might put to some use. What do you do? You cut them in half, you stick a back on them and throw some magnets on them. And then they stick to, this actually doesn't go here, but let me just see if I can tweak that just a little bit. But it'll, it'll, it doesn't stick here because it's not quite sticky enough. But I have the one, each one of these on either side of my bandsaw and they hold uh, the remote for, uh, the dust collector, they hold uh, chalk, they hold uh, pins and stuff. And so they can stick to the side of a, a lathe. Um, that one's sitting there. Um, can't really see it, it's off camera. But uh, yeah, it's just a, uh, uh, a thin piece of uh, wood that I cut out rough to shape, glued to the face of the edge of the bowl, and then inset some magnets. And, uh, and away you go. So, um, uh, people have used this idea of, of cutting a bowl in half, putting back on it and putting hangers or something on it, use it for a planter, um, that kind of thing. So yeah, uh, that's what I did. I just put magnets and it now resides on the, uh, the side of my bandsaw holds, holds things, hold things I need there. So that's, uh, that's another use for them. Uh, let's see. Where am I at? Yeah. Okay. There we go. And uh, let's see. Um, 
I can take a little detour here. We'll go to let you know. We're always looking for Q and A. Uh, so that's what this session and stuff is all about today. Um, so if you have any sort of magnet related stories um, or you want to point to a place, uh, let me know. Uh, we'll do that. Um, I'll be back uh, next week for sure um, on that. So just a reminder, not going away yet. Um, and then just a reminder about Wood Turner's retreat, uh, six turners, July 31, uh, 2021. So in a month and a half and thereabouts, uh, we'll have six of us uh, turning um, for a, uh, uh, a Zoom session, I guess. Um, find out more details at woodturnersretreat.com and uh, we'll uh, look for more there. So let me uh, just change that background a little bit. Then, let's see, move that off. I uh, had something in mind. Oh, yeah, I was going to show. Uh, bu -bu -bum. Bear with me as I change things over here a little bit. I'm just going to pull up the uh, the web page. And we'll put that behind me and get down the corner. So um, the web page here is uh, woodturningtoolstore.com um, under explore wood turning live streams. Uh, this is where you will see, uh, you can watch the live stream here. It's, um, uh, if I click on this, it'll start playing the live stream. Um, and down below, here's the schedule. So we're doing magnets. What do I have? Uh, lathe mounted desktop next uh, next week or yeah next week. Okay, I hadn't really thought about how I'm going to do that. I got to change a bunch of stuff over here to do that. So um, we'll see how that goes. That might be interesting. Uh, so that's uh, next week, and then the last one is to be determined. So I'm going to have kind of an open session. We'll share uh, when we talk, summarize a little bit what we talked about shop uh, tips and jigs over the last seven weeks. And then, uh, so that's the schedule, you find that there. And then down below, you'll see all of the uh, live streams. You'll notice I've got sanding disc here, uh, but the last one was drum sander. So I haven't uploaded that one yet. So I gotta do that now, or after the stream. So find that there. Um, and then, uh, yeah, I think that's, that's what I had today. So let me, Put that back up there. And uh, we'll go through. And I'm just going to check my area here because I know I had pulled a number of things out. Oh, I know. I had this. Uh, yeah, that's right. I had one other thing that I don't do, but I have heard others do. So let me, uh, let me go back here. So I've got, I've got a little snack bag, right? A little Ziploc bag. So... What I've seen some people do is take a very powerful magnet. I won't get too close to anything because it's going to snap everything to it. Put it in a Ziploc bag. And then put this underneath your grinding wheel um, at your grinding station. And what it does is it, it'll collect all of the uh, all the shavings and stuff. So, or all the, uh, the metal filings or, or grinding dust. Um, it's, uh, it's a way to kind of keep it clean around your grinder. Um, I just tend to leave it and I have a vacuum it all up. I always wear a respirator when I'm grinding. Um, at least a mouth, nose, respirator. Because uh, uh, grinding dust, especially aluminum oxide wheels, is probably one of the worst things for you. Um, and uh, I use mostly CBN. But still, I don't want to inhale any of that grinding dust. So this is another way to kind of maybe use magnets around your shop is to collect grinding dust. So anybody out there use that uh, strategy? Um, you know, let me know. I don't, uh, I haven't used it in, in any uh, in partic particularly. So, um, but that's something I forget who told me that or where I saw it. I think it was at a club meeting or something. Um, but somebody, somebody does that. So it's another use of magnets. Um, and I'm looking around, talked about that one. 
talked about those ones. So I've got I've got these guys on. I'm gonna move this guy out of the way. I've got these guys both on my headstock and my tailstock, as I said. I've got another magnet on the tailstock for more. Um, oh, I know, I forgot the best magnet thing of all. The little magnetic LED light. Why didn't I think of that before? So this is a great thing because if you, uh, let's see, I've got, um, not that one, that one. So, um, you know, it sticks right on to your metal parts of your lathe. I usually have it on the tool rest and it lights up a very bright light so you can kind of see what you're turning and stuff. So I don't have it set up here today to, to show uh, on the tool rest, but it'll uh, stick to anywhere, your banjo, uh, that kind of stuff. Um, let's see if you have it, uh, obviously it's not gonna stick to the, it won't stick to the ax minster, but uh, you, know, you can put it up anywhere on your, on your board, you need light. This is also great if you're doing any plumbing indoors. If you're underneath, under the sink, and you're trying to get the wrench up there, that's a great solution. Um, or if you're a mechanic working on your car, just slap it into wherever you're trying to get to. Um, it's, uh, it's a great little thing. It's got about a seven foot cord uh, on it. It's got a switch. You can see that just inside the frame. Little toggle switch to turn it on and off. It's in line. So thank you, Cindy, for putting those together. And uh, so those you can find on my site as well as Cindy's site for sale. Uh, let's see. Steve says, I used very strong barb magnets to hold all of my unhandled tools. Keeps them close and right at hand. Oh, yeah. That's a great, uh, great use for um, a magnet. Uh, uh, sorry, a, a bar magnet like, like this guy. Um, I just haven't, uh, I haven't got the wall space um, right now to do that. So. Um, I keep all of mine in a drawer behind me, believe it or not. So good use. Excellent. Uh, Dave, thanks for joining. Uh, the metal grinding dust can be used to ebonize. Oh, okay. Interesting. Yes, I guess you could uh, do a vinegar solution and put uh, iron filings in there, have it rust, and uh, um, create that ebonizing solution. I think it's vinegar, right, uh, that does that? Um, but yeah, that's what I think. Good idea. So it's always a use for it if you uh, collect it. You could use it as a, uh, although it's tool steel, I don't know that I'd want to use it as a sort of a crack filler um, on your wood turnings. Um, so that's probably not a good idea for, for using grinding dust. Good stuff. Excellent, uh, excellent ideas. Uh, let's see. That is, uh, I think, going to be uh, it today, unless there's any last comments, questions. I really appreciate everybody joining and uh, the input you guys have. Uh, it really makes me uh, keep going at this stuff, so it's kind of fun. I do enjoy the Friday afternoons um, and uh, getting together in, in the shop. Although today I forgot to turn the AC on until I got out here, so it's a little sweltery. Um, so I want you all to stay cool, uh, for sure. Stay healthy, stay safe. Um, I think that's going to be, oh, hang on. There's a big one from Dave. What does he say? Whew. Uh, that's where iron acetate comes in. The iron acetate, which can be made by simply dissolving steel wool in vinegar, will react with tannin to produce the dark black color. This acts as a stain for the material it is being used on. The more tannin in the material, the darker it can get. It's also possible to add tannin to material by making it react better. Yeah, so oak has got a high tannin rate, so oak uh, would probably ebonize fairly well. Um, good, yeah. That's uh, good information. So just remember, folks, these comments are on, uh, Dave is on Facebook, so um, you should be able to find those uh, when you look at the Facebook. The stream I put on my webpage is YouTube, so I don't get all the Facebook comments, but um, I do leave them up on Facebook and uh, YouTube, uh, so you can go back and look at the comments afterwards. Um, so any resources, whether it's Total Element or K&J Magnetics, uh, those things you can find uh, looking through the comments. I appreciate what everybody would uh, give me a thumbs up or a like or a subscribe on YouTube. Uh, that would be great. 
uh, help. You know, just it doesn't hurt. Um, so thanks, Dave, for that info. Thanks, Tony. And thanks, Cindy and Steve and, and Lowell and and, um, and Norm and, and uh, was it Henry and, and uh, Lee. Appreciate you all joining again. And uh, so that's it for me, Todd, from Alan here, 230 Todd. I will uh, leave you today uh, and have, like I said, stay cool, stay healthy and safe. And uh, we'll see you next Friday. Bye for all. That didn't work. One second. Okay, now I'm saying goodbye. There we go.